Hi, let's take a look at something called classful IPv4 addressing. Okay, it's legacy. We don't do this anymore. Okay, but this is how IPv4 addresses used to be assigned. This never applied to IPv6. Okay, so RFC 790, long time ago, grouped unicast addresses, our IPv4 address base, into three sizes. Class A, B, and C for the users. So they, so uh, user addresses, network addresses would have something in this range here. Also, we reserve the multicast address range, which is still used today, by the way. So multicast address is still used 224 to 239. It's the first octet. And experimental addresses that were never, never used, well, if, for, like it says, experimental purposes, never assigned to actual devices. Okay, so class A, B, and C. Okay, so here was the key to all of this. And let me get my pen out here so I can help, help you through this. We have class A, class B, class C. And the key to this was class A had a specific subnet mask. 255000 or slash eight, which means the first eight bits was the network portion, the last 24 bits was the host portion. Class B was a slash 16, 16 bits for the network, 16 bits for the host. Class C, 24 bits for the network, only eight bits for the host. This gave us certain ranges of addresses, and I'm gonna talk more about this in a moment. But this was the thing. If when you received your network address, you received, let me kind of clear this out, make us a little bit more room here so I can write. When you obtained a network address, let's say you obtained an address with 150 was the first octet. Okay. That told you what class it belonged to, in this case, class B. Okay. So it would be 150 and then three, we'll do like this, okay? Uh, but it would be a slash 16 mask, right? So the first part was the network. So this, maybe you had a seven here. That was your network address. The next 16 bits was your host. So the first octet told you what the mask was. And you only had three masks to choose from back then. Either a class A address with a slash eight, a class B with a slash 16, or a class C with a slash 24, okay? So the subnet mask was automatic, automatically determined by the value of the first octet. All right, well, this did not make it, you know, this is back, you gotta remember, this is back in the days when people really didn't care about connecting to the internet. Matter of fact, in the early days, that the federal government had to actually uh, kind of really encourage uh, universities and, and other institutions to join the internet. Maybe, you know, hey, you're not gonna get this grant or we're gonna cut off this grant funding from you unless you join. So uh, back then, this was, was, you know, this wasn't a big issue, but it was very inefficient, okay? Because if we look at the number of class A networks, there were 126 of them, each one with 16 million possible hosts. Class B, just over 16,000 networks with 65,000 possible hosts. And class C, 2 million networks with 254 hosts. We look at the total possible addresses, kind of take a look at this, it's kind of, kind of interesting. We wasted most of our addresses on these 126 networks that had 16 million, probably far more than they needed, okay? Where we had a lot of other networks that hardly had any hosts. Okay. But this, at the time, were the only three sizes you could get, okay? Not very efficient. Okay, so how did they come up with these ranges? Okay, we said a class A had the range of zero to 127 in the first octet. That's because we looked the first octet, the first bit had to begin with zero. It didn't matter what the next seven bits were. Well, if we put all zeros here where those X's are through all, to all ones, we have 
and look at this entire eight bits in decimal, we get zero to 127. If the first two bits began with zero, one, excuse me, one zero, that was a class B, and this would be actually the range in decimal we would get if we had those X's from all zeros to all ones. Class C was one, one, zero, okay? And this was the range. And I won't go into the details here, but this allowed things like classful routing protocols where we could actually, routers could, could actually uh, exchange routing information with each other's networks that it knows about just with the network addresses. They didn't have to include a subnet mask because the sublet, subnet mask was determined by the value of the first octet in the network address. Beyond this conversation, like I said, this is all legacy stuff now. All right, as we've seen, it's pretty inefficient on inefficient way of allocating addresses, okay? Uh, that's because, you know, we only have so many addresses to give out and it was either like super big class A addresses with 16 million Class B with 65,000 hosts or Class C with only 254. Very inefficient. Now we use something known as classless addressing scheme, also known as classless interdomain routing called CIDR. Okay, so if we look at our Class A slash 8, Class B slash 16, and our Class slash 20, or Class C slash 24, there's the masks. Okay, if this is all, this is how providers had to allocate addresses at one time. Now in a classless scheme, okay, we're not, they're not bound by this. They, they can give out anything in between. So any masks slash nine all the way to slash 26. Okay, which means that they can subdivide the networks into smaller groups. So we can, they can start giving out, the, you know, based on the justification of the need of the company, how many hosts do you need? Okay, I'll give you the right amount based on what you need. And that was really important as we began to run out of IPv4 addresses, okay, that we had to really be careful on how, or providers had to be very careful how they allocated their limited IPv4 address space. We're gonna see that's not a problem with IPv6. IPv4 has been kind of a pain lately because we spend so much of our time in subnetting and these other things we'll talk about and just trying to reserve IPv, con or conserve I should say, IPv4 address space. With IPv6, there's plenty of address space uh, and it makes management of the address space and, and everything else so much easier. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand a little bit about legacy classful IPv4 addresses.